In this video, we'll discuss how to choose the right inflation pressure. As mentioned in the video on seated blood pressure measurement, there may be situations where an inflation pressure of 180 or 200 millimeters of mercury may not be sufficient or appropriate to use as an inflation pressure. One of the more common reasons for not using a generalized or nonspecific inflation pressure is the presence of an oscillatory gap. An oscillatory gap is an abnormal finding when one of the carotid cuff sounds becomes silent or temporary inaudible. Typically, this gap occurs between the second and third carotid cuff sounds and can range from a few beats to more than 20 millimeters of mercury of deflation pressure prior to the reappearance of sounds. Oscillatory gap can be caused by arrhythmias, very low heart rates, and increased arterial stiffness, and is more common in older patients, and that's likely due to the age-related changes in arterial stiffness. In one study, 21% of patients with hypertension in a primary care clinic had an oscillatory gap on manual blood pressure measurement. If manual blood pressure measurement is performed by auscultation alone, the oscillatory gap may not be detected, and the true systolic blood pressure may be seriously underestimated. It's important to note that automatic oscillometric blood pressure cuffs are not affected by oscillatory gap. We'll talk more about this in another video. To avoid missing an oscillatory gap during manual assessment of blood pressure, the use of the radial ablation technique can be performed, which involves the following steps. Locate and palpate the radial artery, slowly inflate the cuff while palpating the radial pulse until it disappears. Then inflate the cuff to at least 30 millimeters of mercury above the pressure where the radial pulse disappeared. Slowly deflate and auscultate for the carotid cuff sounds during slow deflation of the cuff at roughly, again, two millimeters of mercury per second. Another variant of this technique would be to slowly inflate the cuff until the radial pulse disappears and inflate a few millimeters of mercury above it. Slowly deflate the cuff and record the pressure at which the radial artery pulse reappears. And then when you measure blood pressure again, add 30 millimeters of mercury to this value and use that as your inflation pressure. Additionally, if you hear the carotid cuff sounds immediately after deflating the cuff, it's likely that you underinflated and it would be recommended to re-measure blood pressure using a higher inflation pressure. This usually happens in patients with elevated blood pressures or hypertension. Either versions of the radial ablation technique can be used to determine the appropriate inflation pressure in such cases. The last technique to avoid underinflating will be just to ask the patient what their typical blood pressure is and then add 30 to 40 millimeters of mercury above that value. Now, the reliability of this technique is very limited, and it's because patients are often unable to accurately recall their blood pressure, and many patients may not even be aware that they have hypertension, which is likely due to the asymptomatic nature of hypertension, even at crisis values. Thank you.